Hi, I'm Scott Drummonds. I'm a pre-sales specialist with EMC. I spend a lot of time traveling and talking to customers, and recently they've been asking me about the software-defined data center. In fact, not only our customers, but some of my friends at EMC have asked me. Both ask, what is the software-defined data center? What does it mean to EMC and our customers? And how will it change the way we each do business? I'd like to try to explain. First, the software-defined data center is enabled by the proliferation of x86 processors. In the 1990s, Intel and AMD started to win the processor wars as they took over more and more of the compute in the enterprise. About 10 years ago, we started to see these Intel processors not just in servers, but also throughout infrastructure everywhere. For instance, all of EMC's core storage platforms today run Intel processors. This means we have a common platform across all of infrastructure that can run code written for Intel processors. Now, another change that's happened throughout time is as vendors have differentiated providing value to customers, intelligence has sprung up in many levels of the infrastructure stack, in storage, in networking, as well as the rich software that we run in services. This intelligence running on Intel processors means that we have specialized hardware, sometimes running in firmware, that could be executed by Intel processors. What we know is now that they're all running on a common platform, we have the opportunity to actually start to consolidate some of these components. That is to change the very nature of infrastructure to just provide the data services that are needed. The ability to transfer, to fetch, to store, and to compute where all of the specialized functionality that was distributed throughout a large number of infrastructure components can now be centralized. If you're a customer, why would you want to do this? I'll offer two ideas. First, a model of centralized intelligence is more simple for you. You will have fewer touch points to the wide number of infrastructure parts and appliances throughout your data center. You will now have fewer interfaces to that. There will be fewer firmware upgrades. In short, this becomes an environment where cloud scale can be managed by fewer people. But it's not just that. This environment is also now more flexible. Consider Legos. Through simple components, they can be bricked together and locked in interlocking parts to make very complex and beautiful structures. We'll be able to do this with a common infrastructure providing services to cloud management and orchestration. Now, my colleagues at EMC always ask, but how will our storage change? What does that mean for other infrastructure providers if they want to keep up with this world of a software-defined data center? Well, there's a simple answer to this. In the new model of infrastructure, we'll continue to provide data, service, data services at the infrastructure level, but now the control of the infrastructure will move up and into management. This means no longer will humans directly be controlling and configuring their infrastructure. Instead, that will happen automatically through software. This means APIs will rule. You should expect among all parts, definitely from EMC and all of our competitors, rich APIs that allow management and orchestration tools to easily configure the underlying services. Now, specifically, what am I talking about with EMC's core storage platforms? Well, if you've been following the changes we've made for years, you'll see that we've actually been marching down this path of an SDDC for a very long time. In fact, at virtually every VMware vSphere launch, we've had day one support for the rich set of APIs they provide to improve performance, backup, disaster recovery, etc. We also have are introducing support for Hyper-V APIs, such as uh, ODX. Pat Gelsinger made an interesting announcement at EMC World earlier this year that we can run, or will be able to run, virtual machines on our core storage platforms. This gives us the flexibility to add arbitrary functionality with only software to our core storage platforms. 
Also, you've heard from VMware, a project that we're working on with them to change the interface between core storage and VMware. We call this virtual volumes and hope it to bring to market someday in the future. We have a project by which we'll provide ubiquitous RESTful APIs to all of our parts to make them simply managed through management tools, through orchestration, or through administrators that simply enjoy using scripted configuration. And lastly, another announcement Pat Gelsinger made in May, we will run every one of our products, core storage and appliances inside a virtual machine. This is a true promise of software defined data center from an infrastructure provider when we make it possible to run our software on arbitrary hardware. So these changes to EMC products are going to change the way our customers administer their infrastructure. If you look at the historical model of infrastructure management, it's based on the following idea. A problem occurs or a request is made and an administrator gets his hands dirty, responds to the alert, responds to the request, gets his hands on the hardware or the keyboard and responds to the issue, addresses it, and then releases uh, the ticket. We propose in the new world, instead what we'll see more of is automation. Instead of it looking like an action-based management system, it's going to look orchestration-based. Effectively, this means customers will be deploying service-based models, service-oriented models using policy management and service catalogs. In this environment, the procedures are set up in advance and infrastructure runs itself. In this environment, infrastructure administrators are no longer responding to demands to deploy services. They are instead taking a strategic view of the future of their resources. Who gets access to this amount of storage? Who gets access to protected storage? Who gets access to high performance storage? In the old world, we would have had direct engaged modeled products like vCenter. In the new world, we'll have automated products like vCloud Director. In the old world, we might be using Unisphere to directly configure a storage. In the new world, that could happen automatically through UIM. In the old world, we could have network management. And in the new world, it could be a NYSERA based orchestration virtualized network management. Now, I'm careful here to talk about software-defined data center technologies because I really do believe the SDDC is different from the cloud. How are they different? Well, I draw a simple line between them. I believe the cloud is an operational model. It's a model that is defined by self-service catalogs, self-service deployment and catalogs, by process-driven administration. It is defined by extreme mobility and built-in security. These are the tenets of a different operational model that can transform IT. So the software-defined data center is the foundation of this model. It is the technology that enables cloud. Cloud is operations, SDDC is technology. That's how I separate the two. In fact, if I could say that in one sentence, it is, the software-defined data center is the foundation of a simple, flexible, secure, and borderless cloud. And we're going to make it happen here at EMC. Thank you.